the studio. Former police detective Peter Blexley regularly helps us out on these kind of issues. I don't know, are we ever going to get a headline, Peter, that says, hey, knife crime's gone away, there is none anymore, or it's got better, immeasurably better? Uh, we just seem to see these horrendous figures. 40 incidents every single day. I mean, this is d deeply disturbing. Sadiq Khan is in charge of policing in the capital. I know that the head of the Met obviously plays his part too. How do we get here? How do we begin the process of trying to reverse this? Robust policing. Let the woke and the fluffy and the liberal and the naysayers and the people that want to stop, stop, stop and search and all that kind of stuff, don't worry about irritating them. We've got blood flowing through the streets of London. Teenage blood. 20 teenagers dead already this year. Yeah. And who knows what might happen in the last few days of this year. It is utterly unacceptable. The police carry a large responsibility, but what they're not doing, clearly, is gathering the intelligence. They're not getting the information yeah. about who's doing what and proactively launching operations to try and stop the blood shed before it gets spilt. And was some of that previously achieved because there were, not, not embedded officers, but officers, community based officers, whether they were support workers or whether they were the actual police, but were in communities who had their ear to the ground? Or is that a, is that a romantic way of defining how things used to be? Not at all. It's not romantic in the slightest. It's exactly how policing used to be. And whilst, of course, when I was in uniform, we didn't live in a crime-free nirvana, at least the streets were hostile for the criminals. Mm -hmm. And that worked. What we had was embedded in those days called homebeat officers, more latterly called neighbourhood or community police officers. And it was their job to go out on the streets and come back to the police station eight hours later, awash with tea and awash with information. Yeah. That was their job. They weren't expected to go and arrest people. In fact, that was the last thing we wanted them to do. So they were because... gathering intelligence. Exactly. Having a cup of tea, having a chat down. Everybody knew them on their beat and they knew everybody. They knew who was up to what because they got told it. And when they came back to the station, they logged it. That was disseminated. And then oiks like me in jeans, trainers, a hoodie and such like would go smashing doors in the following day. Yeah. And it worked. It did work. There was a lot less bloodshed than there is now. One of the other issues, of course, is the... Uh, and every I, I think I've interviewed every Home Secretary since Jack Straw, apart from the, the, the most current one who's been there about five minutes. Um, and they all say we're going to get tough on knife crime. You know, if you're caught carrying a knife, first offence, you're going to go to jail for a long time. Never happens. It's never really been taken to that level of seriousness, as they allude to. Is, is that part of it as well? Because I sense that... You know, certainly if you're caught for the first time with a knife, and it could be a substantial bit of kit that you've got down the side of your trousers, no, nothing seems to happen. I mean, it's almost like you get a warning, it gets taken off you, and that's it. The, and that could happen more than once, and you still don't get a custodial sentence. Were, there was reliable stats that I looked at this year that showed that, on average, it was the sixth or seventh offence before people were getting into court let alone getting punished and yeah, sent yeah, to yeah. prison. Whatever happened, the three strikes and you're out. That seemed to never have been implemented, quite, quite obviously. It's a dreadful situation. And there are these foolish people that want to abolish no reason stop and search, which is granted under Section 60. Um, and what happens is if, for example, there is a murder... And let's not, let's not skirt around the truth here. Out of the 20 teenagers murdered in London this year, the overwhelming majority of them are black or brown-skinned. That is an indisputable fact. And where there have been arrests and charges, the overwhelming majority of the perpetrators have been black or brown-skinned. They are simply facts. So when people have a moan about people that are black or brown being disproportionately stopped and wanting to get rid of no-cause stop and searches, so often, when there is bloodshed, mm -hmm. when there's a police officer on the ground frantically trying to save a teenager's life and they know there is going to be more bloodshed, a senior officer goes, Section 60, stop and search everyone. Let's stop yeah. the bloodshed now. Yeah. And some fools want to get rid of that power from the police, which it's is ludicrous. Which is extraordinary, because what you've just cited there are, as you say, they are just facts. And if you look at, you know, neighbourhoods where there are uh, a disproportionate amount of 
gang mentality. You will find young black kids have gravitated to that in, in a greater way than some of their white counterparts or peers might have done. Uh, I mean, that's just... A, as you say, these are basic facts. Trying to, therefore, you know, look for a kid of that demographic in that particular... I mean, if you're looking for football hooligans, you'd probably be looking for, you know... People for, like me. Pe people like you or me, you know, shaven-headed, 20-something white blokes. So th this is just... Why are we dismissing the... It's not even an elephant in the room. It's just pretty blooming obvious, right? Because the woke well, that karate... that particular crime, that's who you're looking for. The woke karate wants something to moan about and they don't really understand and grasp the harsh reality yep. of losing lives, children's lives, on the streets of our great cities. You're right. It needs to be robust and the police need not worry about upsetting people or causing any offence yep. as long as they are well-intentioned, trying to save lives and fundamentally lock up dangerous bad people. There it is. Uh, Peter Blexley is with us. Also, Tom Slater is with us too, editor of Spite Online. I mean, this is the sort of merry-go-round story, Tom, isn't it? It never really goes away, and uh, every couple of months we get another set of data. It's equally or more disturbing than the previous set of data we got. Well, what happens to this with Salik Khan, who seems to be more fascinated in talking about getting people nicked because they have the wrong size engine in their car? I hear him talk about that more than I hear him talk about this. I know it's, it's a complete scandal. We're at risk of this kind of nihilistic violence just becoming the kind of background noise of city life. And you really cannot allow that to take place, particularly when you've got people who, on supposedly anti-racist grounds, are opposing policies that would save black and brown Britain's lives. I find yeah. that morally unsupportable. We had this ridiculous merry-go-round of a debate where, oh, is it youth centres, as if it's that scumbag who took that young woman's life over Christmas in Bermondsey. If, if he was able to play table tennis the night before, maybe it would... He been, wouldn't have done it. He yes, wouldn't have actually yeah, done it. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. This is clearly a policing problem. There's also a kind of moral issue in society that needs yep. to be dealt with. And I just find it so shocking that people who claim to care about, say, the inner city youth so much so that they want to oppose policies that might actually save their lives, they're obviously full of it when an issue like this comes up because they're yeah, more yeah. wedded to a ridiculous ideology than actually doing the things that will... And it, and it never ever comes. You know, place. when I speak to community leaders or people who purport to represent some of those groups, they're never available to talk on this subject. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about it. It's, it's almost as if you know, we, that's not an area we go to. We don't discuss that particular element of criminality or that particular problem with this element of criminality. The other thing about carrying um, knives, and I, you know, I put this out as an outsider, really. Uh, if your first offense, first offense, not second offense, you're caught carrying a knife, and let's say. You, you don't go to prison because there are no prison places. So it's a practical consideration there. What about an electronic tag and a curfew, Peter? I mean, what, well, what's wrong with saying, OK, you've been caught carrying a knife, you're not going to jail, but you are going to be tagged for six months and th that means you can't go out after 6pm? I mean, is that not... Am I missing something here? That seems to me like a really obvious thing to do, quite an effective way and quite a cheap way as well. And those conditions are laid down by an order, invariably from a court, and when I analysed Kent Police's arrest data earlier on this year, nearly half of all their arrests were for, guess what, breaching orders. And, of course, wow. this is on the day when a House of Lords Justice Committee lays down recommendations that more community punishments should be imposed because the prisons are full. Right. Quite frankly, this liberal dancing around the issues is not getting us anywhere as the bloodshed clearly shows. Yeah. We need to be unapologetically robust in our dealing with this. And if that upsets a few fluffy Liberals, then I'm right up for upsetting them because there are too many young lives being snuffed out and I have spent too much time in the company of wonderful people yeah. who have lost their children to knife crime and they are the people that carry the whole life sentence and simply never get over the hurt. They just do their very best to try and cope with it. Indeed. I